If Tool really didn't like that talk Brian Flores was bringing, he should have hit him with the people's elbow. Or, or better yet, the RKO. Yeah, I know about the guy. Live from the Anajar and Levine Accident Attorney Studios. The man your man could smell. Theo Dorsey is theoretically speaking. But are you a different animal and the same beast? What does that mean, Kobe Bryant? Streaming live on YouTube, here's Theo Dorsey. Good people! It is a Tuesday. We are theoretically speaking. It's your boy, Theo Dorsey, right here with you, kicking it. Spilling some flavor. Got my guy C Cat on the ones and twos on the other side of the glass. And if you tapped in with us on YouTube, we just practiced. We just practiced our uh, RKO, yeah. RKO move uh, by the great uh, Randy Orton, who we saw last night in, in Monday Night Raw. What an experience! My first time in person checking out some wrestling action. The vibes, the vibes were going. They were uh, definitely getting after it. Bunch of dudes sweating and. Knocking each other out with cheers, and there were tables involved. And CK, I just was, it was a lot. It was a lot to take in at once. Um, and again, like I said, Tua Tonga I mean, that's the that's the topic of the day for everybody. Uh, if Brian Flores responds. We're going to get to that uh, later on today in the show. I know we've been inundated with this Tua versus Flores and where the face of the Dolphins is going now this year. We'll get to all of that. I think more pressing is the fact that uh, our good team here at Good Karma Brands, ESPN West Palm, uh, Steph, shout out Steph for hooking up the food for us, Brian Rowitz, our guy, McLovin, uh, making it shake, getting us in the suite, and Seacat, we were in the house, Emirate, Emirate Bank Arena, home of the Panthers, but last night, it was home of Monday Night Raw. Oh, yeah. And it was active. We're just a bunch of primates in there, man, going crazy. <laughs> Silver so, Brown Breaker. We're we're. I'm gonna give you my my top five takeaways from that experience because it was uh, very different from anything else I've ever uh, kind of been a part of. I I as a kid never got into wrestling. Um, as an adult, still never really tapped in on it. But that was that was kind of it. And one of my favorite things of everything was uh just chanting with a crowd. Everybody likes a good crowd chant. That is the basis of the sport of wrestling is yeah. getting the crowd involved. So, of course. Yeah, like just anything. If people are yelling stuff and it's catchy, I, I will join in. I will hop in there and do it. Uh, not sure who I was rooting for at times. Not sure what I was saying. Uh, but what I do know is a good crowd chant gets going. I'm getting involved in it. Uh, that includes even sometimes when I'm at a opposing team stadium. Like, I I'm not going to lie. Like, the, the Eagles and the Jets, I mean, spelling out team names is just, it's just fun. I don't know if it just it's nostalgic of my days when I was learning letters and growing up and learning how to spell words, but you know, a little E A G L E S Eagles. Like I, I like it. J E T S Jets Jets Jets. It's fun. It is fun. That's sometimes why wrestlers do well and like why they get famous is just because their name is fun to say <laughs> or their music is fun to sing along to. Yeah. Yeah. So we're going to get right into that today. And again, we do have uh, Dean Thomas and Tina pulling up later on today. We're going to tap in with them, get some uh, some theoreticals going. Also, which hobbies, which hobbies are unattractive uh, from men to women. And um, also, again, we do have to discuss this stuff with Tua and Brian Flores because there's a new wrinkle. There's a response. But let's start off. Let's get it going with my top five takeaways you think you know from Monday Night Raw at Amaret Bank Arena. There goes the music. Whose music is that right there, CK? That's a rated R superstar, Edge, now in AEW. Okay. Shout Edge. Is he new? Is he a new guy? He's an old guy. I was about to say, Edge sounds familiar. Yeah, Edge is old, man. All right, shout out to the guy. He wasn't there last night, but this is about last night at Amaret Bank Arena. My top five takeaways from my first in-person wrestling experience. And shout out to the WWE for having us. Number five. Number five is, I don't know if you noticed this, C-Cat. I was watching the match last night. I think, I think it might be fake. No. All right, come on. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. But it, was, what, it was right in front of you. How was it fake? Number five. No cartoons, <laughs> no CGI. It happened right in front of you. Number five is that I was impressed. I was impressed by how, obviously, it's fake, right? They're not actually hitting and hurting each other. But it felt like synchronized swimming. Like, pro wrestling doesn't get enough credit for how much it feels like synchronized swimming, how, how everybody's in the right place at the right time. Guy leaves his arm hanging off the rope just so the other guy can come over and grab it and put him into a headlock and then he throws him against the little banister thing and then he goes under and while he's hanging on the ropes he gives the guy time to like go under and lift up the mat and 
pull out like a chair and some other theatrical things that were hitting each other with bamboo sticks. And he waits for them. They wait patiently and they kind of like play dead up there. And then the guy comes up and then he runs after him and he's about to attack him. And then the guy that was playing dead turns around and right in the nick of time defends himself, does like a counter move. All of that to me is like synchronized swimming. I think they stole from that and I think the artistic value gets lost in all of that. Wrestling is synchronized swimming and great job. Great job to the uh, chemistry of these athletes. I guess so. Number four, Seacat. I feel like they just really roided up theater kids. Is that not a takeaway that you get from these dudes? Like, they are so, so gifted. They're so, like, the monologues are so encapsulating. Like, I, I enjoy the theater of it all. And then they're just really, really strong, and they're able to do flips off each other and really, like, get after it. I think they're roided up theater kids. They don't get enough credit for probably their upbringing. They're probably one of the best, you know, in the plays and whatnot because the acting is on point out there. Listen, man, there were a lot of skits and sketches and, like, takes that were taken probably three days ago where they recorded it and played it as if it was live. Yeah. There's certainly a lot of acting in wrestling that isn't just live in the ring. It makes sense why The Rock is, like, you know, a big-time movie guy now. And John Cena made that transition, too. You're just doing a lot of good acting, a lot of, like, you know, playing up your personality, and, and I didn't see one person miss a line. So amazing stuff right there out of Monday Night Raw. Number three. Number three. And this one is, uh, again, this is an ode to what I expected versus what I got. Nobody left their seats. And also very well-mannered fans. I thought it was going to be a raucous crowd. I've gone to SEC football games. I've gone to college football out here. Uh, you think about even sometimes high school sports has a more rowdy crowd. That was a very well-behaved, in unison, no fights. Everybody was in their seats, too. Like when I went outside to take a call. The concourse was empty. Everybody was glued to the action all night long from 7.30 until the end of the last fight. It's a kid-friendly game nowadays. You know, it's not the attitude era anymore. There's no Edge and Lita celebrations with a bed in the middle of the ring. Yeah. Look that up on YouTube. You know, it's a little watered down nowadays. Watered down. So you don't enjoy how how chill and calm the uh, the, the crowd is these days. You got to be because there's so many kids in attendance. Yeah. You know, well, I'm a hardcore guy. There's kids at all of the NFL games, college football games. You see people killing each other literally in the stands. Yeah, Cowboys, Niners games. Yeah. yeah. That's a I good mean, point. Like, I was, I'm just impressed. At a sport like that where there's literally violence or at least stage violence right there in front of you, there's very well-mannered fans. So kudos to you all. Number two. Number two, the music needs a complete overhaul, including whatever the hell we're listening to right now. Metalingus. None of it connects. None of it resonates. I can't get jiggy with this. Like, there was nary a song played last night from, again, we were there from 7.30 until about 11.15 after uh, after my guy, what, Randy Orton, uh, rko finally RKO'd him. Yeah, lovely RKO'd Kaiser. Kaiser, and I was rooting for Kaiser. I hate that. Uh, they didn't tell me ahead of time that Kaiser was going to lose. I wouldn't have rooted for him. But yeah, the music was was mid. It was not even just mid. It was kind of was putting me to sleep. Well, the music has taken a downturn in the past ten years. Like Why? How- That's like the most important thing for anything for radio shows for churches, and especially in an environment like that, wrestling. You got to get some good music going. I'll play you a song in about three minutes that you might like from wrestling. Okay, okay. And here goes number one. My number one takeaway from Monday Night Raw at Emirate Bank Arena out in Sunrise, Florida last night. A great time. Good vibes with the team. Uh, just, you know, again, underwhelming music. Number one. Absolutely not for me. I was hoping that I would catch more of the wrestling bug. I was hoping that I would get more of it. But I, I what I realized is I don't shame people for their passions. I think it's amazing and great that people enjoy that stuff. I just couldn't I couldn't get into it like I hoped I would have been able to. Like growing up as a kid, I used to love the video game uh, SmackDown versus Raw. We used to get after it. We used to get busy. I... It didn't hit the same. Maybe because The Undertaker didn't pull up. I think if The Undertaker pulled up, which was my guy, and my brother played with Kane, we did the tag team, the brother thing, like, that would have maybe, like, it got to me. But CM Punk didn't do it for me, bro. Well, back in the day, they kind of pretended like it was more real. Like, they really hid the fact that this was not a performance art and that it was an athletic competition that they were putting on TV. They hit it a lot better about 20 years ago. Nowadays, it's more about the athleticism, crowd reactions, but... It's a show. It is a show. And you want to hear the one song that I think that you will agree is Please. a great song Please. in wrestling. Please. This guy who's kind of in the minor leagues of wrestling right now. His name is Joe Hendry. Okay. And this is how a song starts. Hold on. Stand by. Come on, Joe. In, in Get me three, going. 
Get me going. Throw, Joe Hendry, he's not from America. Okay. I forget where he's this from. This is riveting radio. Here on Theoretically Speaking. Say his name and he appears. I believe in Joe Hendry. I believe in Joe Hendry. Because he loves him in London and Paris and Tokyo. America, Scotland and Canada. And Mexico. You know it. I believe in Joe Hendry. Okay, now cut that, cut that off, please. Cut and that off, please. Guitar okay. solo. That, that's almost as bad as the Colts song. The Colts fan song was worse than that. <laughs> that's up there, though. I mean, what, what am I supposed to do with that, CK? I don't know. Sing along to it, and then clap your hands. It doesn't move me. It should. What's the worst? The, the beat is the beat is whack. Um, Thank you, like my guy Jalen Gilkey here in the chat here on YouTube again at Theo speaking. It's possibly the worst song ever penned. I believe in Joe Henry. Henry. Henry with a with a D R Y. Have a real last name. Can't even figure that well, part I of it out. Believe in Joe Henry. Is he a winner? Is he good? He's pretty over, which means like people care about him. Okay. Given the reaction nowadays. All right. Well, yeah. Cut his song. He sucks. Um. Well, yeah, those those are my top five takeaways from uh, WWE from Monday Night Raw. Uh, and did you enjoy yourself, CK? That's what matters the most because you are a fan of wrestling. I don't want to denigrate. I don't want to dilute what you have cooking for your fandom. How how was last night for you? Would you grade it on a scale of uh, A to F? A to F, I'd give it a solid B, you know? Mm, okay. You know, I like wrestling. I prefer a different brand of wrestling. That's not displayed what we saw on Monday night. I see it on Wednesday nights or Saturday nights. So you know what? It was a good time. You know, I can always appreciate some good graps. Not mad at that at all. Um, you know what we are time for right now, though? What's uh, that? We're going to switch it over from wrestling where fans are well-mannered well and chill and good. And we're going to go over to, well, the NFL, where fans are, are thirsty to, to get in each other's face, to talk some crap, and then sometimes literally, you know, murder each other, which is bad. We condemn that. Uh, but yes, let's get over to the NFL, get some previews going because I saw some lines on Hard Rock Bet that got me up in a fit. Time for some Teddy Tua Days, or theoretically speaking. Uh, uh, Teddy Tua Days brought to you today by Duffy Sports Grill. If you're doing a fantasy football season right now, if you're a commissioner and you haven't done your draft, listen in. Tap in right now. Duffy'sMVP.com. Type that in, hit them up. Book a private room for your fantasy football draft because when you do, you can enjoy two for one drinks which is the entirety of your draft before and after. You got the jumbo wings. You got the award-winning burgers, the major leaguer. I would recommend it. And also on top of that, you got 80 or more television screens all throughout the area. So you can watch whatever you want to tap it into. If there's some NFL preseason you want to have on, if, if there's some major league baseball action you want to catch, all of it can be a, a hat from any room at a Duffy Sports Grill because, again, 80 or more television screens. Book your private party, and even if you're drafting from your home turf, Order a party platter, a Duffy's party platter, and you can be the MVP of your draft party. Order that now at Duffy'sMVP.com. At Duffy's, our game is always on. Before we hop right into it, I saw the, the comment there, not believing in Joe Hendry is a shame. Well, how can I believe in somebody that I've never heard of until today and his music sucks? All right, it's a step too and far. And his music sucks. The music doesn't suck. It does. It was terrible. Absolutely horrendous. You do better. Uh... A team that's going to do better this year than they did last year because they had a lot of improvements. We start the Teddy Tool Days with the Chicago Bears. Thank you. Know. A little hike, hike. Oh, hut, hut, hut. There it is. There it is. The Chicago Bears. The Chicago Bears who are on hard knocks right now. I'm enjoying that a lot. Last year they were 7-10, and 10, and that was with five games where Tyson Bajit was out there throwing the ball. 13 starts from Justin Fields, who can't win a quarterback competition with Russell Wilson. 7-10 and 10 last year. They won four of their last six. Important to note, and three of their last losses all came by single digits. They were right in the hunt with a poor roster. So this offseason, goodbye offensive coordinator Luke Getze. Hello, Shane Waldron. Caleb Williams, number one overall pick. Keenan Allen gets picked up out of free agency. You bring in Romo Dunze, a top 10 pick at receiver. And also, DeAndre Swift, it's a little overrated. But, yeah, they upgrade the backfield right there. Their win total, C-Cat, after all of that, seven wins last year, seven wins last year, and now all of those additions, their win total on Hard Rock Bet, eight and a half. This is the easiest bang the over win total I've ever seen in, in all of my history of looking at NFL preseason takes. This team has the third easiest strength of schedule. 
it's lined up. The stars are aligned. You saw what Caleb Williams was looking like, not just in practice, but in these preseason games. The dude looks electric already, a Heisman winning quarterback. I looked at their first nine games, CCAT. I think they go seven and two through their first nine games. They got the Commanders, the Jaguars, the Panthers, the Colts, the Titans, the Cardinals, the Patriots. Come on. I, I, I'm all in on the Bears this year. Let's go right to the ceiling the of this squad. The ceiling is the root. Let's make it happen. If, if the ceiling for this Bears team, again, I said they're starting 7-2. and two. That's You can write that in stone. The ceiling for this team, 13-4, and four, an MVP season out of Caleb Williams. Yeah, I said it. An MVP season. This is the ceiling. This is all things go correct for them. And on top of that, they're going to lose in the playoffs. But they're going to put up a throw. They're going to put up a show. They're going to threaten one of those NFC contenders uh, for sure. That's the ceiling for the Bears. How about if everything goes, like, incredibly wrong? The floor. The floor for the Chicago team is nine wins. Still above that eight-and-a-half win total. Even with if Caleb Williams maybe misses some times with injury. Maybe one of his weapons goes down in Keenan Allen or DJ Moore. You still got Roma Dunze. You still got Cole Komet. You still got a, one of the deepest backfields in the league. They improved on defense as well. The Bears are, are destined for success. They are. They're really damn good. The floor for this team, the floor is nine wins. So let's pull out the big Teddy crystal ball. The Bears are going 12-5 and five in 2024. All right? On top of that, on top of that, Caleb Williams is breaking every single Bears passing record. They're all very low watermarks. I mean, I could go out there and break them, especially with the weapons that they have right now in Chicago in the Windy City. He'll be a top five MVP candidate. He'll be a guy that they're tweeting about. They're saying, hey, he should win it. He's that good. But there's going to be a bit of, hey, wait your turn, rookie. And, and he deserves that. He deserves that. I could also tell, by the way, Caleb Williams in album mode. You look at his haircut. Not a, not a freshly pristine cut at all times. Sometimes that's good. That means he's focused. He's in album mode. He's ready to put together a great campaign. And this will be leg one of one of the greatest turnarounds we've seen from a head football coach in the National Football League. Matt Eberflus, because of Caleb Williams, the, the, the greatness that is Caleb Williams and what he's going to mean to that franchise, that city, and the league, Matt Eberflus is going to end up being a Hall of Fame head coach in this league, CCAT. Whoa, you got caught with the Eberflu. Yeah. I mean, did you see the new look on Hard Knocks? I mean, the guy looks better now. His wife uh, helped him improve his look. He changed his hairstyle up. He's keeping the beard in shape. Matt Eberflus is doing that reclamation thing that people do. They look themselves in the mirror. I have a Ferrari at quarterback right now. I better damn start looking like it. I'm telling you right now. Ten years from now, we're going to be talking about, remember when we said Matt Eberflus should get fired? That dude is going to be wearing a gold jacket. And it's because of Caleb Williams. That's it right there. And also, in case you missed it, they got Simone Biles on their team now. They got Simone Biles. Didn't she wear a jacket that did I not know. have the Bears logo on it? It, it had, had a it Packers had a, or her, a Panthers? Her husband. It was a Packers. J J Jonathan Owens is her husband, who was the safety for the Packers, is now on the Bears. And, yes, she wore a jacket that had his jersey all over it and had Packers logo. I know that's a no-do or a no-go. She's an Olympian. You see, Noah Lyles doesn't even know who Nikola Jokic is. Simone Biles doesn't know about that rivalry that much. Also, for Simone Biles, what happened last time she was in the stands rooting for a team with a first-year starter? I don't know. Tell me. Well, it was last year with the Packers and Jordan Love, who not just won a lot, but also beat the Cowboys and then went off and got a big deal. Simone Biles from the H, the GOAT, a good luck charm. The Bears are going to be really good this year, guys. That's just it. They are. They're going to be damn good, and anybody that's not on the Bears bandwagon, I suggest you get on it now before the lines start moving. The Windy City. Woo! I'm feeling it. I'm feeling the vibes. Shout out to my, my folks at uh, ESPN Chicago, ESPN 1000, man. They got a, a great team to follow this year. Uh, that was Teddy Two-A-Days. We'll get later on. We'll get later on the Buffalo Bills, who have a 10-and-a-half win total. I'm telling you right now, the Bears with 8-and-a-half win total and the, and the Bills at 10-and-a-half, you need to flip those. That's incredibly wrong. Much better roster in Chicago. That was Teddy Two Days. Are you experiencing foot and ankle pain and need to see an expert in the field? Baptist Health Orthopedic Care is a team of foot and ankle orthopedic surgeons and specialists who are regarded as leaders in their specialty. Visit baptisthealth.net slash ortho to learn more today. Baptist Health Orthopedic Care combines its resources of experienced physicians and leading edge treatments and technology to provide advanced orthopedic foot and ankle, joint replacement, spine and sports medicine care. Visit baptisthealth.net slash ortho for more information today. Baptist Health Orthopedic Care has offices conveniently located in Palm Beach County through the Florida Keys. Learn more by visiting baptisthealth.net slash ortho. On the other side, we have the safe bound get around. And if we have time, 
I'll tackle those Buffalo Bills whose win total is entirely too high. That's CCAT. I'm Theo Dorsey. We're theoretically speaking on ESPN 1063. Live from the Anajar and Levine Accident Attorney Studios, Anajar and Levine Accident.